Hello everyone. Thanks for joining us for this interview section. So before we begin, I would like to give a big shout out to the CTF team. Once again, they allowed all the players to dive in an incredible world. So thanks to them and to all the staff who made this possible. So hi, Eric and Marc Olivier. Uh, actually, you two are part of this incredible team as a scenario designer and a challenge designer. Uh, could yes. you please each describe what is your role? Yes, my name is Eric. My, my role as a challenge, as a scenario designer, sorry, is to create an overarching story that surrounds every single challenge in the CTF. So that way we have a cohesive story and uh, to, to give more reason in, in, uh, as to why people are working on. Yeah, so my name is uh, Marco. Uh, so my part is to create challenges and coordinate with the with Eric to uh, create a challenge with a theme uh, that merge well and uh, yeah. Great, thank you. And so uh, I have a question for Eric. Um, how is the theme of a CTF created? Like, could you describe the steps involved in creating the theme? So naturally, CTFs are not necessarily team. The goal is to have technical achievements, things that you exploit. Uh, in the different ways. But over time, what we figured out that it makes more sense when, when there's a team. And the way that I, I, I find teams is by taking inspiration from everywhere. So I look at what is going on in the world. I think of interesting stories. And it's done way in advance because the, the team is paves the way for all challenge designers. And what I do is that I think of a few ideas I keep thinking about what could be an interesting NordSec team. And then I show my ideas to the, the challenge designers. And when I feel that, okay, yes, we're in, into something, now we start with it. And the challenge designers build around, uh, around this team. So it's a, it's a long effort, and, uh, but it's, it's always very interesting. And I would say also, the team evolves over time. What was initially just a simple idea, like for us, like for this, this year, it was what if there were computers during medieval times? So just a one-liner, but now it evolved and it's much more precise now. It's more rich because there's a story that is built over uh, through all the challenges. So yeah, it's, a, it's, it's interesting. Thank you. And like, um, this could be a question for both of you. Like, how, how long does it take from the idea of the team to the finalization of the CTF, including the, um, the challenges and everything? I can start on my end. Uh, so it, initial, the initial idea was probably given, la, uh, well, it was given last year. I think it was around last summer, actually, that we started to have a team. So. At this moment now, I, I have a, a, uh, an, an overall draft idea and we pass it into the challenge designers. So Marco? <laughs> <laughs> well, when we, we, when we create a, a, a challenge, uh, we mainly take the, the main team, so uh, the, the medieval team, and then we, we try to find a way to make it work. Um, like with uh, we play on words um, and stuff like that. Then Eric comes back with us to create uh, uh, like a, a very big team that goes with it. it. It it's not that complicated, but it's it's very fun. It's it's definitely very fun. Yeah, it seems so. <laughs> and like, do you have uh, any funny stories to share about uh, the team creation and the challenge creation? Well. I know that this year, I mean, we're talking about medieval times, which it, it was different costumes, different uh, way of thinking. And um, yeah, like we have a challenge that I work with, with, with Marco and- he, <laughs> I still like, feel uh, filthy yeah. about this one. <laughs> so the, the, it's called Kinder Market. It's like Tinder, but instead of finding a date for you, you find a date for your children. And it's it's a very unusual challenge that is <laughs> that, that that we present, and uh, 
yeah, Marco was was sometimes feeling weird about it. And what are we really doing this? Yeah, we can do it. And, <laughs> I, and, I feel uh, I still feel dirty, but <laughs> like it, it's fun. It, I'm, uh, many teams solved it already. I'm yeah. I'm glad about it. Yeah. And the conclusion to this particular scenario is a super positive one. It's about uh, building peace with a neighbor kingdom. So in the end, if the the the, the challenge uh, the, the the participants solve this track, they actually build what what could be one of the first steps of creating peace for Nord Sectoria. So it's it's a weird challenge, but we always try to bring it in a positive way. So and one thing about that uh, challenge, it almost never come to light because it took me a lot of time to make it work under uh, a container uh, on Linux. So because we are very limited uh, on the resources that we have and the database that I, I used is uh, very demanding. So uh, I think it took me like more than three months to make it work. Uh, I work a lot with the infrastructure team to make it work. It, it was it was crazy. Um, like even a week before the CTF started, it almost like never came to light because it was taking too many resources and stuff. So I'm glad it came to light and people were uh, were able to solve it. Cool. Yeah, I did not realize like uh, that's true. Like many with many challenge, you have to to be careful with the resources, obviously. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so. How many volunteers are working on the CTF? This is this is a colossal uh, endeavor. I mean, we we have somewhat like twenty challenge designers that work that produce challenges. Then you have all the behind the scenes work, uh, people that coordinate the efforts, people that do the communications, people mm -hmm. that do uh, the infrastructure also uh, for challenges. What, what people might might ignore also is that there's a lot of people that work behind the the, the CTF like art. You, you see for, uh, currently on your screen, you see a NordSec uh, 21 logo. That's one of our artists, Jeremy, who does an amazing job. And same all the thing, Kinder, all the Kinder yes. Market photos are from Jeremy as well. Yeah, the picture of the the children that you look at, they are done by Jeremy. So there's a lot of people actually that work to give life to this event. And uh, it's it's such a pride for us to uh, to, to, to do that and um, to, to bring that result to our participants. Cool. And so all these people, uh, how many tracks are created uh, by CTF? Yeah, this, this year is very impressive. I, actually, this year, I think there's more tracks than the two previous years combined. It's absolutely it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy. We we have what I think. A it's good... really hard to say per CTF because it depends on how many challenge designers that you have. It depends on um, the time that they have. Uh, like I I know some people that come do challenges year by year, and this year they went there. Um, so with them, it would have been even bigger. Um, so yeah. it, it, it depends on how many people that wants to pitch in because you don't have to be uh, a pen tester or somebody on the blue team or whatever to create a challenge. And anybody can create a challenge. Okay, Absolutely. yes, this was actually my next question. Uh, in what areas do the volunteer of the CTF team work like? That? So you said uh, you don't have to be a pen tester. So do you have like... A, an yeah, answer? well... Anybody can create a challenge, right? Uh, it depends on what you want to do, because if you want to do a physical challenge, like you don't need any web expertise, you don't need uh, network expertise. It depends on what you want to do, right? Um, but uh, like Laurent did a lot of, uh, of the lock picking over the years as well. So you don't have to be a pen tester to be able to do that. Um, but to make a, a good challenge designer, I would say like you need experience. So you need to uh, to do a lot of CTFs. Um, that, that that's that is what yeah. That is when you realize what you like in a challenge, what you don't like in a challenge. Because a challenge that is too guessy, it's not fun for anyone. 
uh, you you really prefer to have a challenge that uh, show you where to go, and then from there you try to work your way around it. Um, so yeah, the experience in your field, so like pen tester, uh, uh, blue team, purple team, web web developer, uh, anything can work, and you need to have like creativity, of course. But what can help? Uh, for me, what can help is the all the mandates that I have throughout the year, um, because many of my challenges I take real mandates, real life situation, and then I make a challenge about it. So it, it, it's it's astonishing because like you can find those things in real life, but it's true. So uh, if you if you work as a pen tester and you see a lot of these things, you can make challenges really easily. Oh, that's cool. And, and that's something super nice with the, the wide variety of volunteers that we have, because all these people have their, their own experience and they can bring into, into the CPF what they've seen. And with the team now, we just put it into a different color. But it, it, even if you're doing weird things in the medieval uh, team CPF, you're actually doing real things on the field that you, can, that, that, that you can have to do. Like we have an incident response track this year. That's amazing. That's very blue team. That's very uh, procedure and, and investigative, but it's real. It, it, it's real experience that you will get in the field. And cybersecurity is so large. There's so many skill sets involved. It's not one single um, one single set of, of, of skills and type of, of activities. So we go from data science to, to web development, uh, networking all, and reverse engineering. All these things come into play. And it's thanks to the variety of volunteers that we have that we can make this so rich. Yeah, this is so cool. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, there is this. This field is is so big. Like, it's uh, so. This is so cool to be able to have it in a CTF and to, like, uh, this year there there is a beginner track and it's good because it's an introduction to all those um, those uh, different fields. So that's really amazing. <laughs> and yeah, that, that track, I'm I'm proud of it because uh, I I made it all. Uh, by myself, it was an idea that uh, many Nordsex before they wanted to do it, and this year I came and I'm new to the challenge designer team, so uh, I took the the responsibility to create uh, like a, tr a full track for beginners. Um, I see that it's not that easy. Uh, some people are still struggling with it, but um, many people learned. Uh, I I had. I got great comments on it. Uh, a lot of people talked to me about it. So uh, I'm pretty proud of, proud of that one. Yeah. Cool. And so uh, are there any challenges that you are most proud of? Um, I'll say Kinder Market is one of them, but uh, Gold Connect, Gold Connect is uh, one of my favorite. We made it last minute. Um, and it was a team effort. So it was not just me. It was also uh, Maxime Nadeau, uh, David Lebrun, and uh, Nicolas Lamour. We, we created uh, that big challenge. It, it has uh, six flags, including one that is like worth nothing. It's just a meme. Uh, it, it's just for fun. But um, it, it's a very, very big track it's worth a lot of points and it's very fun, but uh, we had some challenges with it because it's running on Windows and uh, it, it takes a lot of resources. So, but yeah, I, I like that one very much because it's it's also based on a real life situation. So it, it, it's super fun. Uh, when I found this in real life, I was super excited. Like also talking about resources, um... Are there any challenges that you had to uh, uh, lost because you they, they would take too many resources? Uh, we haven't lost any so far, I believe, but we came close to lose uh, like Kinder Market. We came close to lose Gold Connect as well. We were close to lose 
I don't remember the name, but it's uh, it's like a, a three container one made by uh, Max and Nado. Um, so most of them were running Java and Java takes a lot of RAM. So, and we are very limited on resources per container that we have. So it, it, it's crazy, but uh, we made it work. Uh, and we are proud of the of the challenges as we created. Um, the like we we also try stuff throughout throughout the year. Like we we have tried to install MSSQL on Linux, but it takes uh, again a lot of RAM and a lot of resources. So we decided to make it on uh, Windows Box instead. Um, yeah, so we. We, we've got a lot of challenges, to creating challenges because of resources and stuff. So were there like a challenge that was particularly difficult to implement? Uh, I, I'll say Kinder Market is one of them because I haven't played that much with the database that I used. And uh, I remember doing like playing with it in college but it's it's uh, it's a long time ago during only one class, so I don't remember everything. But uh, I I made it work with the help of uh, Max and Nado. He helped me a lot with this uh, to install to install like the 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 language that I use to install the database uh, to make them work together and stuff. So he helped me a lot with that as well. Yeah, this is amazing. Like all this great energy with, between your teammates. Uh, and so I'm really thinking of joining the team one day. I mean, it, it looks really like a great experience. And yeah. by the way, if there are people in the audience who are interested in the challenge or scenario design, how, how, how can they apply to be a volunteer? So there's on the website, there's a way to subscribe as, uh, uh, as a volunteer. So you can go in there. But of course, for challenge designers, we, we we do like to make sure that we recruit people with experience. So one of the best ways actually to become a challenge designer is to win the NordSec. Because after, just like someone like, like Marco, uh, when someone wins the NordSec for a few years, it, these people are good. These people understand and want to give the chance. So uh, yeah, you might be recruited uh, just just like that. For, for, for scenario design, this is, this is a bit different because I'm working as, uh, I create the story and it's one narrative and historically I've managed it all by myself and it's, it's, it's a lot of effort. And um, I think maybe next year I would like to share the work. So if someone is interested, just, just hit me up and uh, uh, just ask and we can, say, we can check how we could have this done. So, yeah. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Eric and Marc Olivier. I, I hope the audience enjoyed as much as I did. I had a lot of fun with you too. And thanks for sharing with us what's behind the curtains when you build a CTF. And on this note, I wish all the players good luck and enjoy the rest of the CTF. So, uh, bye and, and back to you, uh, Sebastian. Bye. Bye-bye.